Good evening all, it's John, aka Whiskey and Sound, with another episode of Baller Maker Mondays. So, um, thanks for joining me again tonight, and what I'm going to be doing is going through the start of a, a little bit of a, a shootout between um, a handful of companies that have a whiskey with a specific paired beer that go back together as a Baller Maker package. Uh, for example, Bladnock uh, recently come out with uh, something that was made specifically for specifically for Boilermaker House, and uh, that was a 18 year old Moscatel uh, finished whiskey with a um, a spiced amber ale, which was made matched to that particular whiskey. Um, I'll probably end up doing a review on that because, admittedly, when I first tried that um, that beer, I I wasn't really sold on it, and I was a few drams deep, so I I didn't try that beer with a fresh pellet. So I'm going to give it another shot. I got myself a full pack of that uh, those particular beers, so I'm going to do a review on that uh, on that pairing as well because I have paired that blade knock with something in my earlier um, episodes, so I know that, but we'll pair it back with what was specifically made for it. But this is going to be a um, uh, quite a few um, examples in the shootout. So uh, Lark come out with uh, the Wolf release, um, edition three, and they've got their Johnny Smoke Porter from Wolf of the Willows. Um, the Bakery Hill, I want to try and get my hands on the beer if I can. The I've got the Blunderbuss Whiskey, but the Imperial Stout, which is the Kalash. Now, I didn't realise up until now there were two releases of the Kalash. There's a normal um, annual release that they come out with, and there was one that was specifically paired back with um, the Blunderbuss Barrels. So, um, and that I think sold out in two weeks. So I am trying all my power to get my hands on a can of that. So then that way I can do a proper review of that particular whiskey and beer. Uh, but there was also, I'm pretty sure there was another one as well that I had in mind, which was a beer that was specifically made for the whiskey, whether it was barrel aged in that particular whiskey or, uh, or with a, uh, f because of that particular whiskey, it's been barrel aged. Um, there's a few, like a few places have done it, but the handful that I have at the moment, I'm going to do reviews on them, make a bit of a challenge, and I'll score them accordingly. Um, I actually don't have that scoring system as yet, but I'm going to do that very shortly. But the first one that we're going to review is the Iron House. Uh, distillery or brewery and distillery, I should say, their whiskey and beer uh, pairing, which was um, made available to us through the Single Malt Whiskey Club as their August package or their August whiskey of the month, which they offered the porter uh, to go back with them as well. So the deal was, <coughs> sorry about that. The deal was. These have been uh, matured in four year make um, four years in maker mark barrels or makers mark barrels, um, and after that was produced, the um, Ironhouse make their own beer as well as distill their own whiskey. So after after they've done the maturing of the whiskey, they've taken the barrels, put the porter into it, sat in there for three months, aged it released it as a ball maker pairing and this is what we got given to us for the month of august from singlemalt.com.au so um i'm gonna get stuck into this um i had a cheeky dram of it the other day and it was actually really nice these beers i've had a few of them already because i ordered more than just a four pack um and I must say, they are the easiest drinking porters amongst the easiest drinking porter. Probably, if not the easiest drinking porter I've had in a very, very long time. So, but I have not had the porter and the whiskey together, which is what I'm going to do tonight. So, 
Without any further ado, I'm going to get me a little freshie. And that sound is just music to the ears. And I'm sure every whiskey drinker will concur. Beautiful. All right. All right. This, now I remember trying this back in um, August 2019 um, at uh, Tassie Whiskey Week, actually. I was down at the, um, uh, where I was staying at the Hadley's Orient um, Hotel in the city, and uh, they had a bottle, I think, of their first or second batch. I can't remember which one it was. This one in particular was batch five. I know that much, which was given to the guys at Single Malt um, Whiskey Club. So, yeah, batch B5. I'm pretty sure I think the one that I had was in B1 or B2. But um, I can confirm that with the guys afterwards at Iron House, and um, I'll put that in the notes after. So, but on the nose, this is... Yeah, this has got... This reminds me of that Jamaican old gold... Oh, old gold Jamaican rum and raisin chocolate. That's what I'm getting on the nose. But then it's almost like I'm getting a um, like a Mizanara oak kind of spice on there. Um, doesn't smell like Mizanara oak, but like the spice, um, the spicy note that you get from something that's been matured in a Mizanara oak is what I'm getting on the nose now. So it is it is spicy. And it's got that light oak smell as well. So which is. Uh, it's really nice. It's very pleasant. Very pleasant. Yeah, it's got a real light and delicate nose on it too. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll let that air out a little bit in the glass. And, um, I'm going to get stuck into this porter because I've been hanging for this. You know what? Monday night, finish work. I've just had dinner. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have me some. <laughs> Right, all right, so getting into that, um, that is heaps of chocolate, like so much chocolate, but an equally amount of uh, caramel with, um, with a lot of coconut in there. That's awesome. That's actually going to work really well together with that. Yeah, that's going to work so well together with that. Um, and there's not a lot of hop in there. Like, there's hardly any. It's more chocolatey and fruity. Um, almost like cherry ripe kind of um, hints is what I'm getting on this. So, um, yeah, so, like, this does not drink, like, a 6% um, porter at all. Like, it's probably a bit too easy to drink of a porter. So, um Definitely one that I'll rate quite high, that's for sure. So, all right. Um, now we've had a beer wash. Let's do a beer rinse. All right, let's do a. <laughs> I've already technically I've already done a beer rinse. Done a beer wash. Let's do a whiskey rinse. Oh yeah, that spice comes straight out. But um, then it goes, yeah, that that wood and spice comes straight out on the um on the front of the palate. Um, and it's more like a cereal note that I'm getting on the back end. Um, but. Yeah, those two actually carry themselves really well together. Um, yeah, like you can see where the, you can see where they complement each other. That's for sure. So that's um, yeah, that's actually very nice as a beer wash and a whiskey rinse. But um, now that I've been acquainted with the whiskey, let's do a whiskey wash and a beer rinse and see what that does. I've already got a suspicion as to where it's going to go. I'm probably going to go with the latter, like drinking the whiskey first and then rinse it down with the beer. So. Um, 
knowing what the palette is on, on this, um, I reckon that's possibly going to be the winner. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be both easily just as good. Yeah, much uh, sweeter. Sweeter nose is starting to come out now that it's had a bit of airtime on glass. This is um, this is actually a really nice, really nice whiskey. And <laughs> it's it's funny because you get that. Um, I mean, anyone that knows about the X Maker, uh, X Maker's Mark, or just Maker's Mark casks um, to begin with, they are given to uh, the famous group at Scotland. Um, I'll start that one again. Uh, given to famous distillery in Isla Lafroy, they mature their whiskies in Maker's Mark barrels. So, and if you've uh, that, there's a particular note that you pick up on the palate, and that's what I'm um, getting in that. Not to say that this re reminds me of, Floyd, uh, of Lafroy, it's got a hint of what you would get extracted from the Maker's Mark. So, Ever so slightly, ever so slightly. So, <clears throat> all right, let's, uh, I've got a frog in my throat. I'm not speaking um, very, very well at the moment. I seem to be jumbling my words. I think I'm almost ready for bed. I've had myself a really good meal, had a real long day at work. But you know what? I'm going to finish this episode through um, because I've been hanging to have this all week. So, anyway, let's do a whiskey wash and a beer rinse and see how that comparison goes. Yeah. That's, yeah, that old gold chocolate rum and raisin, definitely on the palate, as well as on the nose. Um, <clears throat> loads of spice. And it's, yeah, it, it's like the kind of spice that you get um, from, from like a Mizunara oak um, aged whiskey. That's that's how it interprets me anyway. Anyone else can say otherwise, uh, but that's that's what I'm getting on the palate anyway. Um, yeah, and it's yeah medium sized finish on it. But yeah, real cool stuff. Now let's see how she goes after having the porter. Yeah, it almost turns that into the coconut and caramel come out big time on the um, on the palate. Almost very buttery as well. It's um, yeah, really nice. That these two blend together so well. No matter what way you try to wash and rinse, whether you go beer first or whether you go whiskey first, they just they do their thing. They complement each other so well. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure you can still get these, pardon me, I'm pretty sure that these are still available through, um, the Single Malt Whiskey Club, so if you are a member, you can still get your hands on these. I'm pretty sure they're about $25 for a four-pack, or I think they're about $89 for a slab, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and these... Should still be up. Uh, look, the um, the guys at Single Malt may still have some of these available in stock. You might want to check, but I'm pretty sure that you can get your hands because I don't think this was. I don't think the recipe for this was uh, changed specifically for the the single malt release. Um, very positive. It is just uh, purely a separate batch that they've made, but the whiskey should predominantly be the same. If you can get your hands on batch B five. Cool, that's matched specifically with this particular porter. 
Otherwise, if you can't get your hands on B5, they've got their bourbon cask, which is readily available on the Ironhouse um, Distillery website. So feel free to get your hands on some and go to the Single Malt um, Whiskey Club page, get your hands on a full pack of these. And you know what? Let us know what you think. I love this pairing. And I'll rate it quite highly, and I think it's going to set the bar high for the other baller makers that I'm about to try in a similar league. Um, so, yeah, this is um, this has been really good, really good trial out. Um, right, well, I'm going to enjoy these, and uh, shortly after that, I'm going to go straight to bed. So, because <laughs> it's been a long enough bloody day for me, and I'm already rambling on more than I probably should have. So uh, thank you everyone for putting up with me tonight and um, I, um, I look I appreciate everyone's attention I appreciate everyone's feedback as well that I've been getting it's been um, yeah truly appreciated and keep it all coming um, uh, yeah like share subscribe support uh, throw me any feedback as to you know, how I'm going on these particular episodes if there's anything more that you want to see or anything that you would like me to uh, compare or try to pair up uh, and um, or any collaborations so uh, yeah feel free to keep all those comments coming and I'll catch you boys and girls on the next episode next Monday night have a good one